Hello and welcome to the Lakshmi Narayana Global Music Festival 2021. We're very excited to celebrate the 30th year of the Lakshmi Narayana Global Music Festival with this special online series, virtual concerts and interviews brought to you straight to the comfort of your home. We're very excited to present a legend, one of India's most beloved voices, Anup Jalotaji. I hope you enjoy this performance. मुझे आज बहुत खुशी है कि डॉक्टर एल सुब्रमण्यम जी के पिताजी और गुरु की मेमोरी में लक्ष्मी नारायण ग्लोबल म्यूजिक फेस्टिवल जो सुब्रमण्यम फाउंडेशन ने ऑर्गेनाइज किया है मुझे मौका मिल रहा है परफॉर्म करने का इसके लिए मैं फाउंडेशन को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ और लीजिए एक रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे रंग दे रंग दे चुनरिया शाम पिया रंग दे शाम पिया रंग दे रंग दे रंग दे ऐसी रंग दे के रंग ना ही छूटे ऐसी रंग दे के रंग ना ही छूटे धोबिया धोए चाहे ये सारी उमरिया शाम पिया रंग दे लाल ना रंगाऊ मैं हरी ना रंगाऊ लाल ना रंगाऊ मैं हरी ना रंगाऊ अपने ही रंग रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया शाम पिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया बिना रंगाए मैं तो घर नहीं जाऊंगी बिना रंगाए मैं तो घर नहीं जाऊंगी बीत ही जाए चाहे ये सारी उमरिया बीत ही जाए चाहे ये सारी उमरिया शाम पिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे मीरा के प्रभु गिर भर लागल जल से पतला कौन है कौन भूमि से भारी कौन अगन से तेज है कौन काजल से कारी जल से पतला ज्ञान है और पाप भूमि से भारी क्रोध अगन से तेज है और कलंक काजल से कारी रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया मीरा के प्रभु गिर धर नाग प्रभु चरण में लागी नजरिया शाम पियाबुरी रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे चुनरिया रंग दे that was anup jalota the legend the voice that is beloved to millions across the country now we'd like to hear that same voice in interview with dr el subramaniam 
Namaste Anubji, that was a beautiful performance. Thanks a lot for being part of the 30th year of Lakshmanarana Global Music Festival. Namaskar and uh, I'm really very, very lucky, fortunate having sitting with you, spending some time with you, sir. Is it important to know classical music to sing bhajans like you sing? Classical music actually teaches you the real depth of your performance. Anything you do, you sing or you dance or you play any instrument. If you have learned classical music, so you can go to the real depth of it. Because this is the knowledge you get. Through classical music, you get the real knowledge. It's not really important to sing classical music always. Like I don't uh, sing pure classical ragas on stage. But I use ragas, I use knowledge of classical music, what my father taught me, whatever I learned from Bhatkhande, Sangeet Mahavidyalaya, Lucknow. So I use that knowledge and the importance of this knowledge makes my song more interesting. People start enjoying the classical part of it also and the lyrical part of it also. So the importance of classical music is very, very important for every musician to learn. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. When did you decide to become a professional singer? And who was your inspiration? I was seven years old and uh, was learning from my father. I used to sit next to him on stage and sing a little bit. So when I was seven, once he told me, now today you have to sing solo. I will not come on stage. That was, maybe he was uh, trying to test me. And I just sat on stage and sang for about half an hour without any fear. There were four or five thousand people sitting in front of me. That was Janamashtami show in police lines in Lucknow. So he was very happy to see that uh, I have no fear of audience and whatever I know, I'm singing. That was the day I decided that I will become like my father, a performer on stage. And I started giving my concerts from that age. So from age of seven, I decided that I want to become a professional singer. Oh, great. That's what a start. You started when you were seven years old to sing on a Janmashtami day in front of a few thousand people. That's a wonderful start. May I ask you who has been your inspiration, please? Everyone. Even sir, you are my inspiration. <laughs> I have learned so much from you. Whenever I hear your music, I, 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 get, I get so much. And from every musician like uh, Pandit Jasraj Ji, Bhim Joshi Ji, Pandit Ravi Shankar Ji, they all are like my guru. So when I hear him, hear them, hear everybody, I become a student. I start learning from them. I don't just sit like a listener. I sit and listen to them like a student. Oh, your answer is very inspiring. Can you tell me about your most memorable concert, if you have any you want to talk about? This is very difficult to say because I have done more than 5,000 concerts so far. But yes, I can say that a couple of them were very, very interesting because I was performing with Pandit. Hari Prasad Chaurasiji. I was uh, performing with uh, Ustad Gulam Ali Khansa. I was performing with uh, Zafir Hussain Khansa. Also, sometime with Mehdi Hassan Saab. So these combinations, when I do on stage, once I was doing with Pandit Birju Maharaj Ji. So all these com combinations are uh, in my memory will remain in my memory. So I think these are the 
combination shows which make me feel really proud and very happy. For the collaborations you have done with almost all the legendary people, it's wonderful to hear. Which year you got your big break, if I may ask you? Uh, actually, uh, our music is not something that we get break because it's not a film music. Like in film music, if you sing a song, if you sing a song in film Bobby and you suddenly become Shalinder Singh, everybody start hearing your Mashair to nahi and Jhul Gode Kawa back. But in this uh, uh, bhajan field and classical field, you have to work for many years and then your music will become popular and reach in people's heart. But yes, there are certain albums which became very popular and that uh, album gave me big name, big popularity, like Bhajan Sandhya, in which I recorded Aisi Lagi Lagan and Ramde Chunariya, Maya Muri Mane, Makhan Kayo. But uh, we don't get uh, overnight success and overnight break. Oh, this is wonderful. Your answer will be very, very useful to aspiring musicians and people who have a lot of expectation within a short time. It all takes time. If I may ask you, uh, who is your favorite artist? Would you like to answer that? I think the best artist is Lord Krishna. He is the best musician. As a bhajan singer, top leading bhajan singer mentioning Krishna, it's not surprising, it's beautiful. Now, uh, this next couple of things I want to ask may not be connected with music. Which is your favorite city? My favorite city is uh, Auckland. Auckland in New Zealand. It's a very beautiful city. Whenever I go and perform there, I like to stay a couple of days more and enjoy the city. Yes, New Zealand is so beautiful. And there are a couple of other cities like Christchurch. We almost wanted to get settled there at one point. And we just escaped uh, before the pandemic and reached India just two days before the lockdown from New Zealand. Which is your favorite holiday destination? My home. When I am at home, is my holiday. Because at home, you can get whatever you want to eat. You can have home food, healthy food. And if you don't want to meet anybody, just close the doors. Tell them you are not at home. <laughs> so you get total peace. So my favorite holiday place is my own home. Uh, I totally understand what you are saying. I also try to rush back home once I finish playing. Because you know, also because of my children. Uh, even before when they were very small, I wanted to just get back as soon as possible. I totally understand what you're saying. Thanks a lot for your patience and beautiful answers. And once again, thanks a ton for being part of Lakshmarana Global Music Festival. Namaste. Next, we're very delighted to present tuba virtuoso Oysten Badsbeck all the way from Norway. Today, Oysten is doing a spectacular performance of his own composition, which translates in English as, it's gonna be all right. And he is performing this special duet with his wife, the lovely Anna Badsvek on the piano.
And now we'd like to present a very special interview by Dr. El Subramaniam of these wonderful artists. Oh, bravo. This beautiful piece for tuba and piano. Really, really sounds beautiful. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. This is our 30th year of Lakshmanarana Global Music Festival. It's a very, very special, probably the biggest festival for us. And you have been to Lakshmanarana Festival in the past. Do you have any memories you'd like to share about the festival when you came last time? Yes, uh, thank you first of all for inviting me to the festival. Uh, it has meant a lot to me over the years in many ways that I'll get back to. But getting to India in the first place was probably the biggest experience in that period of my life. As my brother said to me before I left, he'd been to India and they said, it's going to change your life. And it did. The food, the people, the music and the nature which we saw there was just beyond anything. And let me get a little bit more specific here. For example, the musicians are totally world class and they play in a different way. They have a different attitude towards music. There is a lot of fun. There's a lot of kind of light way of approaching the music, but also the most profound way at the same time, which is also incredibly inspiring. The food is just gorgeous. I love the Indian food and it's not at all like you would expect in an Indian restaurant in Norway. Um, and also I learned that the food is very different in different parts of the country, which is also uh, very, very cool to be able to see those differences. When it comes to nature, Kerala was probably the biggest experience when we, first of all, we played on the beach 
for more than 20,000 people, I think, and very few of those had any idea what a tuba was or sounded like. So that was a very, very great experience to be able to shape their impression of the tuba, to show them what a tuba can do and hopefully inspire them to listen to more tuba in the future. Uh, also, I think I met with the leader of Kerala. We were in the car and it was so hot, so we stopped for a drink, stopped at the local shop, bought some water. And while standing outside chatting on the pavement, mosquitoes started to pour in in the sun there and landed on my arm everywhere and I tried to brush them off during the conversation. And he also had mosquitoes all over him. And so I said, why, why don't you brush the mosquitoes away? And he replied something that I still remember. He said, mosquitoes are creatures just like anyone and they need food too. So he was gonna let them have their food, their meal here. And then without brushing them away, when they were happy, they flew away and uh, he was happy too. <laughs> and that was really, really a sweet thing to say, I think. Not that I'd taken his advice and brought it with me, I still brush off the mosquitoes, but it stuck with me. And also the, the backwaters in Kerala, the trip we had on the houseboat there with all the great food, the fantastic views, the calmness, the whole atmosphere was just gorgeous. Wow, what a beautiful answer. I'm sure our tourism ministry would like to use most of your answers to promote tourism in India. What made you to select tuba as your main instrument? And who was your inspiration? Yeah, I chose tuba because it was the only available instrument really. I wanted to play tuba in a local wind band when I was 15. And uh, the tuba was the only instrument that wasn't already taken. So it was tuba or nothing really. And I think my grandfather was one of the ones that inspired me because he was an amateur tuba player, very enthusiastic. And my mother played amateur uh, trumpet and uh, they taught me a little bit in the beginning. Then of course later on I was inspired by my mentors such as Michael Lynn, Harvey Phillips in the US and, and other famous household names in the tuba world. Wow, this is uh, fantastic. You selected tuba because there were no other choice. But here you are, one of the best tuba players in the world. How lucky the tuba is also. You have collaborated with many orchestras and many musicians in different parts of the world. Do you have any special memories of any of the collaborations you like to mention? I think a recording I did with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra was really important for me. And uh, many ways it was a break in my career because I recorded the, the most famous, most common tuba concertos. The Vaughan Williams, the John Williams, uh, Arutunyan and Landscape. And these were I was in incredibly good shape at that time. There was a good flow in the whole recording process. Really good uh, hall to play in the Esplanade in, in Singapore. You know it really well. And um, the orchestra was uh, well prepared. And the response afterwards was just phenomenal. I won an award uh, for that. Plus uh, John Williams, composer of all this famous movie music, the Star Wars. Superman, E.T., uh, Indiana Jones, uh, wrote me a letter uh, thanking me for the recording of his concerto because he really, really liked the recording. And that's something that stick with you, uh, gives you inspiration. Then I have to mention the collaboration with you. We, first of all, we played together at this festival and then we uh, found a good, musical tone, so to speak, and I was so happy when you agreed to do this double concerto for tuba and uh, Indian violin that we recorded with the Trondheim Symphony Orchestra. Uh, one of the CDs that I'm the proudest of, I have to say. Uh, also, one of the tracks on that CD called Tribute to Bach, I think is the most popular track on Spotify that I've ever released. For some reason, people fall for that combination. So for any of you that 
watches this interview, I really want to recommend that CD called uh, uh, Journey. That Journey was also a very, very special project for me, working with you on this whole album. It was a beautiful experience and I really enjoyed doing it. Can you think of any major break or the first break you got in your profession? I think the major break came in 2004 with the release of Tuba Carnival. That was my first CD that really aimed outside of the tuba world and to a broader audience. It was for tuba and string orchestra, original music and some transcriptions, light and very, um, how can I put it, virtuosic. Before that, I was mainly known in the brass circles, which is very, very nice, of course, but being able to reach out to a more broad audience is something that uh, is, is specifically fun. And I think actually that your son, uh, Ambi, was listening to my recording of Chardas, I think, on YouTube, and that was the initial reason for us to to meet, which was <laughs> also also kind of fun to think back on. So yeah, that was the big break, 2004, and that really made a huge difference. And that also made BIS be able to um, uh, record all of my CDs later on. They pay for everything, which is quite unusual these days, and uh, also ended up with this Journey CD that we made together. Oh, that's great. My son Ambi used to listen to different great artists. And sometime make me listen to them and say, Appa, you have to get them to our festival. I've had the pleasure of inviting some of the artists like that. And in your case, uh, I think Tom Gravelli from Norway, he has been associated with the festival for many, many years. And through him and through Norwegian Embassy, we have had the great pleasure of having some of the greatest Norwegian musicians, including you. In the past, we have had Arva Talibson when Lord Minivan came to India. Mr. Tullivson was there, then we had Oslo Camerata, and some brilliant musicians were there. And thanks to Tom, thanks to Norwegian Embassy, thanks to you for being part of the Lakshmanana Global Music Festival. Now, because of the pandemic, we are all in a closed, closed down situation. There are no open concert, no public concert. Hopefully, it will all change soon. I'm sure you're working on several different projects. Would you like to mention any upcoming project you're working on and also any future project you are thinking of doing it, we'd love to hear it. Well, the projects I'm working on now, uh, as you know, this has been a very special year for everybody that is traveling as a musician. I used to do about 60 concerts and 200 days of traveling per year. This year, I think, has been only uh, six concerts in total and almost no traveling at all, which is pretty sad. All the jobs just vaporized into thin air as uh, soon as this virus came. So, what do you do? Well, I had two projects uh, waiting for a while that I've been able now to complete. Or actually, one is complete, the other one is in the pipeline. The one that is complete is a course, an online course for how to play the tuba. And it was inspired by all the emails I get from people asking about how do I avoid this? How do I uh, learn to play high? How can I play louder? How can I play with better sound and all of this? And rather than answering all the emails individually, I thought, why don't I make a course for, uh, for this? So, so I did. Now I have a course which tells people how to play the tuba and also how to develop their own musicality, how to you know, tell the story better and all of this. Um, and there is a preparation section that tells people how to prepare for a concert and that comes with, for example, a practicing plan about how to lay out your career, how to get gigs and all of those things that uh, are important to musicians. And then finally, it's a detailed section about how to play the individual pieces, you know, the Vaughan Williams tuba concerto, John Williams concerto, the Hindemith tuba sonata, all of these. So, yeah, and it's been a huge interest. So that's, that feels motivating to do because I know that people can use this in, 
in these difficult times to develop themselves as musicians. Second project is a CD project that is actually recorded about four years ago, a live concert with um, a rock band. So this is a dream I had for almost my whole life to make a concert or a project with Tuba as the lead singer in a rock band. So that's exactly what we did. We, um, we put together music, actually I wrote most of the music, it's just been laying in the drawer for 20, 30 years. And then finally we got the chance to put it out for an audience and incredible response. And nobody's ever heard it since because it's been recorded, but it hasn't been released yet. So that's something that we will get out now the next half year, I think. So the mixing process and is, uh, is going on right now. Well, that's wonderful, especially even the education part of it. You are talking about how to play the tuba, all the education side of it. It will be very, very useful for future generation. Of course, the other rock uh, crossover will be also very, very memorable and novel. All the very best. Once again, thanks a lot for being part of the Lakshmanarana Global Music Festival. Good luck. God bless. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's performances and interviews, and we look forward to having you with us for the next set of concerts, performances, and interviews of the Lakshmi Narayana Global Music Festival 2021, the virtual edition celebrating 30 years of the LGMF. I'm very happy to say this particular episode is brought to you by Subramanian Foundation in collaboration with Vishwakarma University in Pune.